Y'all act like y'all didn't come to praise him. So when y'all act like that, I've learned just to cut it short. Ain't no need of me hurting myself and y'all sitting out there. Luke chapter 15, I'm going to try to knock it out in the second round. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 20. There you find these words recorded. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great ways off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put on a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be married. If you don't mind, I want to preach from this thought. He waited on me. He waited on me. You may be seated in the sight of God. He, he waited, waited on me. This is a story of the prodigal son, and I, I don't, I don't want to deal with the son. He gets too much too much press. I don't want to deal with him today. I, I don't want to deal with the other son. He, he, he gets bad press. I want to deal with the center of the story, but the church has missed it. We have focused so much on the sons that we miss out. This is Jesus telling a story about his father. Y'all should have shouted right there. Y'all don't miss your time to shout. You see, the parable is not about the son. The sons are, are, are minor players in the parable. But the parable is really about the love of a father has for us. Back up and get somebody, Davis. You see, if the father doesn't love us, it doesn't matter how good or bad the sons are. But is there anybody here that can shout at me and say, I've been the son, but I'm glad I got the father? Oh, I'm glad. I got the Father. Why? If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm, I'm glad I got the Father. Why? It's the Father that decided that I was worthy to be a son and made provisions for me to get there. So if you don't mind, I want to preach from this thought. He waited on me. First of all, he waited through my foolishness. Oh, uh, I don't know about y'all, but have you not been foolish in this lifetime? I, I mean, here is this younger son. He is in the house. He got everything he needs. All the bills are paid. He got a roof over his head, and he is foolish enough to ask the father for his portion so that he might go somewhere else. And how many of us have been blessed beyond belief, and God didn't kick us out, but instead we walked away. We walked away from his grave. Grace. We walked away from his mercy. He loved us and waited for us through our foolishness. I tell the boys all the time, you would be a fool to mess up what y'all got. I mean, but if you dumb that way, don't, don't worry, because daddy will enjoy his own stuff. Foolishness, foolishness is, is I, I, I know better, but I get caught up in the moment, and instead of doing what I know I should do, I let evil take a hold of me. And God is so smooth and so wonderful that he will wait on us through our food. Is there anybody that will testify you went through 10 years of foolishness when you wasn't trying to praise God, you wasn't trying to worship God, but God stood right there waiting on you? you through your foot. I mean, we can do some foolish, foolish things, foolish, foolish, foolish things. We will drink something that we know is going to kill us and drink more of it. Foolish, 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 foolish. He, he waited, he waited through our foolishness. He also waited through our craziness. You see, some of y'all can't shout about foolishness because you say you wasn't a fool, but you sure been crazy. 
I mean, all of us in here need to understand there is a thin line between sanity and insanity. And at any given moment, you all tiptoe on that line. Anybody in here ever had a moment that you crossed over to the dark side and had to look around and say, but God, if God hadn't protected me, I would have messed up everything. Why? Because I'm sure enough crazy. I just ain't been pushed yet. Songwriters say, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Sometimes I often wonder how I keep from going under. It's my craziness. Don't, don't let the grease fool you. I got a degree of crazy in me that if you push me just enough, you will see it. But God is so good. He will put an anchor on my crazy to keep it from showing up when it want to show up. Wait it on me. Through my craziness. You know, you know when you went over there to kill somebody, but they wasn't home. <laughs> you can't testify, I'll say amen by my by myself. When, when you had every intention to hurt somebody, and God made a way that when you showed up, they wasn't there, and you had to look around and say, Thank you, Jesus, because I was shown up on my way to the penitentiary and to hell, but God waited on me through my crazy. I mean, I mean, I mean, don't, 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 I like you got it all, all together. You, you just ain't found your crazy button yet. But keep hanging around people. You, 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 you'll find that crazy button sooner, sooner or later. I, I thought, I thought I had it all together. I thought I had it all, all together. You could talk about my mama. I wouldn't lose my mind. You could talk about my daddy. I wouldn't lose my mind. But when two, two little yellow boys showed up, huh, Oh, when you talk about them, I have been known to lose and forget I was the pastor and the principal. Now, there have been times in which I had to look around and say, look, y'all don't know me right now, but if you say one more thing huh, about that little curly head boy, I'm going to clean out this gym huh, from start to front. And, and, and they look around and say, pastor? And I say, oh, don't, you got to forgive the pastor. You say, at this point, I'm just Terrell, and if you mess with them, what? Y'all ain't never had that point where, where you've been at the Y and almost got kicked out? <laughs> degree, degree of craziness. We were, we were at Cameron's game one Saturday morning, and I was sitting there minding my own business. Wouldn't bother nobody. I was sitting there just watching the game, and, and this man in the stand, Cameron was guarding his son, and he said, get that boy number so-and-so off of him. He's fouling. I let, I let that slide. I let that slide. I, I didn't. I didn't say nothing. He said, you got to get him off before I come down there. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I said, now, now, sir, calm down. I didn't tell him who I was. I said, calm, calm down. It ain't, it ain't that serious. And Cameron did something else and, and, and kind of got rough with the kid and the kid fell. And he stood up and I said, listen, if you step off this stand, I promise you, you won't step no further. <laughs> I, I, I promise you that. He said, well, who are you? I said, the one you've been yelling at, that's mine. <laughs> and before I let you put a hand on mine, uh, I'll put a hand on you. Uh, so it's in your best interest uh, to find you some blessed assurance before I mess you up and have to pray over it. Like, there's some craziness in all of us. And if the crazy button is pushed, God has to hold you. That, 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 that joker didn't think... It was going to be that way. So he, like a fool, stood up one more time. And God has a way of putting provision in there. The former prin a, a, a fellow principal tapped him on the shoulder and said, listen, sit down. I know that man over there. And trust me, he bigger than all of us. <laughs> and I ain't never seen him get mad. But some tell me if he get mad, it's going to be ugly for all of us. Sit, sit on down. And after the game, he came over and apologized. I said, man, listen, it was all right when you was yelling at your kid. It was all right when you was yelling at the referees. 
But that number 11, I'm the one that brought him in this world. <laughs> I'm the one that's been all, uh, obligated by God to take care of him. And he's got destiny on his life. And I won't let you or any devil in hell mess up the destiny. On, is there anybody know what I'm talking about? And sometimes you got to tell the enemy that before I let you have my child, I'll fight you all the way to the drawer, front door to the back door. But I refuse to let you have mine. There's, there's, he, he waded through my craziness. Woo! I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about. Can, can, can I be real with y'all? Can I be real with y'all? I'm talking about that craziness where, where you know you got to be at work at 730, but you out creeping till 545. Some of y'all can't say amen, just, just, just say ouch. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about climbing out of windows. I'm, I'm talking about telling people, listen, if, if I hang up, don't, don't, don't call back. If, you, if, you, if your mama had an extension cord or a switch, you know what I'm talking about. Now, if your mama was just one of them punishment mamas, you probably told them to call back, but, but it only took one time with that extension cord for me to figure out, listen, baby, listen, if I hang up all of a sudden, don't, 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 don't call back. That, that means my mama walked in the room, and if she find me on the phone after hours, my mama don't do the number, grab that extension cord. She ain't gonna ask me if I was talking to Jesus or nobody else. She just. Some, some of y'all will get that when you go home. But he loved me through my craziness, through my, through my crazy times. You, you do know that if God had come back when you were crazy, you'd be in hell. Oh, y'all, y'all, let me talk to some folk over here. If God had come back when you was crazy, you would be in hell. But God stayed where he was to let you get through your craziness because he knew there was a due season. And so when the enemy was saying, look at him, God, look at him, God, God said, I see him, but it ain't time yet. <laughs> Is there anybody in here that'll wave at me and say, I thank God for the, it ain't time yet. <laughs> it wasn't that I wasn't crazy. <laughs> it wasn't that I wasn't foolish. <laughs> it was that God told the enemy, <laughs> it ain't time yet. <laughs> I know they messing up. Why? It ain't time yet. <laughs> but when I bring them in, <laughs> I tell you one thing, <laughs> when I clean them up, <laughs> they'll never go back out there again. <laughs> and they'll stay with me forever. <laughs> and all you got to do, enemy, <laughs> is wait for the right time when I call him home to be with me. So he waited through my foolishness. He waited through my craziness. And then he waited through my selfishness. Y'all do remember when it was about me, myself, and I. I mean, you know what I'm saying? When it was all about me. I did what I wanted to do. I said what I wanted to say. I went where I wanted to go. And God has a way of letting us go through a selfish season and standing right there by us, but waiting for the selfishness to wear off. Anybody ever did something so selfish you had to look around and say, boy, I'm so sorry. And I ain't talking about being apologetic either. I'm talking about I'm so sorry. Why? Because your selfishness will lead you to one place, and that is destruction, because that's all your flesh know how to do is to self-destruct. That's why you eat so much. It's your flesh saying you want more. And so when we're selfish, when we're all about ourselves, God sits there and waits for us. Now, see, some of y'all getting a different picture of God because you thought God got mad at you and went away. You thought God said, okay, since you're going to act stupid, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk to you no more. But the reality is, let me, let me help you out, let me help you out. The reality is, is even in foolishness, even in craziness, even in selfishness, God is right there with you saying, I still love you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. see, y'all should have shouted right there. Y'all have missed your second place where you should have shouted. I don't know if as a father I can go through all of that, but I'm hoping I got enough God in me that I trust the process enough that if the boys go left, I stay right there with them. But most of us have had some folk in our life that left us when we needed them the most. One preacher, one preacher went to a church. 
And before he got installed, the deacon called him over. He says, Pastor, I am with you all the way as long as you're right. The preacher looked at him, thought for a minute, and says, Listen, I thank you for your sentiment, but what I need you to do is be with me even when I'm wrong. Because when I'm wrong, that's when I need you to whisper, I'm still with you, but you're wrong. Uh, and come back this way. And the problem with the church is we leave folk when they're wrong, and we never get a chance to minister to them. Let the girl get pregnant. We don't want to talk to him. Let the boy drop out of school. We don't want to talk to him. Let the boy say he's gay. We don't want to talk to him. Let the girl say she's a lesbian. We don't want to talk to them. And we'll never win folk to Christ we're not talking to. Oh, I feel good right here. You're going to win me to Christ, but you roll your eyes at me and condemn me to hell, but yet you want to tell me how much God loves me. If God loves me that much, why can't you? Because you are supposed to be the God right here. You're the God I see, the God I feel, the God I hear. And if you don't represent him well, why do you think I'm going to trust him if I can't trust you? And so now, now we have a church that is an oxymoron. God loves you, but I hate you. God forgives you, but I can't forgive. God wants you, but don't talk to me. And how we expect the world to ever know who God really is if his representatives are not authentic and real. Oh, he, 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 he waited. He waited on me. Now, now listen, listen, listen. Some of y'all think I'm not in the text. Let me help you out. Still in the text. Every day, every day, every day, this boy left. The father, now I got to use my, my spiritual imagination. Every day that this boy gone, the father looks for him every single day. How do I know? Because the Bible did not give detail and say that on this particular day the father looked. He looks on a normal basis. On days in, there's been feasts, there's been festivals. And I believe the father's going through with the service and they saying, uh, uh, sir, do you want us to kill this fatty calf? He said, no, 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 leave that fatty calf for when my son come back. And they snickering at him, you know, you know little CJ ain't coming back. <laughs> CJ out there kicking it. <laughs> I got a report that he closing the club down <laughs> and open up the juke joints in the morning. <laughs> he is not coming back. But the father still said, save that fatty calf for him. They looking at the robes and saying, do you want to wear this robe? No, no, I'm not going to wear that robe. I'm waiting for my son to come back. I'm going to preserve that robe for my son. And they sniggering again. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't coming back. He, it's been six months he ain't showed up. You, you ain't heard from him in three years. He ain't, he ain't coming back. I heard he was strung out on crack. I heard he was just nothing but a crackhead out there. And I still hear the father say, uh, don't worry about that. Just keep my robe there for him. And, and he's looking through his jewelry box. He sees the family ring and they said, don't you want to give that to the oldest boy? No, 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 I'm waiting for my youngest son to come back. I just believe he's going to come back. And they're snickering, they're talking about him. You know he ain't coming back. He's been gone now seven years, and you ain't heard nothing from him. And the father said, but I'm still looking for him every single day. Why? Because I love him that much that it don't matter what he's in, it don't matter where he's been, it don't matter what he did, he's still mine. I wish I had somebody. Then the Bible says that the boy got out there and was crazy, he was foolish, he was sad office and he decided one day let me go home now that's where most people start shouting it right there let me go home but let me help you out with the text that is not the place to shout at the fact that he wanted to come home here is where you shout at put it up there on the screen for me please if you look at the same text from the message bible it says something now that made me shout this morning 20 verse uh, verses 24 through 22 through 24 he says he got right up and went home to his father and when he was still a long way off, his father saw him. He was looking for him. Shout right there. His heart was pounding. He ran out. 
shout right there, put his arms around him and embraced him, shout right there. Now, Davis, why should I have shouted already? Because here he is, not giving up on the sun and running to where the sun is, not waiting for the sun to come to him, putting his arms around him, and the sun stinks because he's coming straight from the hall pen. Woo, I feel good right there. But I'm going to give you one more chance to shout. Here you go. The word says he embraced him. He kissed him. And the son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. Y'all ready to shout? Put the next verse up. But the father, he wasn't listening. Is there anybody glad that David Daddy ain't listening uh, to your sorry story because uh, his mind is made up. Uh, when I see him, uh, that's when forgiveness happens. Uh, when I touch him, uh, that's when healing happens. Uh, and the word says, uh, he started calling out to his servants, uh, quick y'all, uh, bring me the clean set of clothes. Uh, quick y'all, uh, put the family ring on him. Uh, quick y'all, uh, put the sandals on his feet. Uh, then, uh, get the green fed heifer uh, and roasted. Uh, Y'all ready to shout? Uh, Y'all ready to shout? Uh, Y'all ready to shout? Uh, here's where you need to shout at. Uh, we are going to feast. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time. Uh, my son here, uh, who y'all gave up for dead, uh, is back alive. Uh, who y'all said was lost, uh, has now been found. Uh, that's where you shout at. Uh, when other folks uh, wrote you off, uh, said you wasn't going to be nothing, uh, the father said, I'm still looking. I know they strung out, but I'm still looking. I know they sinned, but I'm still looking. And the word says, throw a party. My son, who y'all said was dead, here he is. Y'all said he was lost, here he is. Is there anybody that'll stand up and look at me and say, here I am. I've been lost, but here I am. I've been lonely. But here I am. I've been dead, but here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, wait, he waited on me. <laughs> I feel good right there. That while I was yet in sin, he was waiting on me. While I was yet lost, he was waiting on me. And when I got there, Mars, he did not ask me where I've been. He did not ask me who I've been with. He did not ask me what I did. He only tells everybody, my son that was lost, here he is. My son that was dead, here he is. It's time to party. It's time to praise. He, wait, he waited. You want to know what the father's doing right now? For those y'all who lost, waiting on you. Waiting. Waiting on you. You can't get to him too late. <laughs> The moment he sees you walk in this direction, he runs to where you're at, throws his arms around you. I know you stink, but you're still mine. I know you're unholy, but you're still mine. Kisses him. I know you're dirty, but you're still mine. Then tells everybody else, I know y'all don't like this, but praise him anyhow. I know you don't like the fact that I love him, but love him anyhow. And church folk, you better understand this, that we got to shout more when Pookie come in than when anybody else come in because the father is looking for Pookie. Heal. 
he was a fat guy. Put that robe on him. Put sandals on him. Put the ring on him. Because I would not present him to everybody and he not look the part. I know you heard where he been, but he gonna still look the part at the end. Stay with me. Quit worrying about all the sin you've done. Jesus puts it this way. I'm gonna present you faultless. Ah, before the all wise God. Can I go ahead and contemporize the text? He says the mess that you come here with, I'm going to rub off of you and put my garment on you and put my ring on you so that everybody else who was gossiping about you aren't going to see the lost you. They're going to see the found Big Mama was here. Big Mama say, I am redeemed. <laughs> Bought with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody ask you just who, who I am, y'all don't mind me, but you just tell them that I am redeemed. <laughs> Hey, I was lost, but I've been redeemed. And that's where all of us in here, we got to act like we've been redeemed. And redeemed folk don't judge other redeemed folk. Why? Because you may not have been in my pig pen, but you was in somebody's pig pen. And you may not have been in my bar, but you was at somebody's bar, but God still still redeemed us. There's a verse in that song that says, if anybody asks you when last time they seen me, tell them I was lifting up holy hands. And that's what a believer does. He says, listen, I know y'all know where I've been, but before you keep me from going somewhere, watch where I'm going. Because where I've been made me justified for where I'm going. Y'all, 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 y'all missed that. If I'd never been dirty, I wouldn't need God's grace and God's mercy. But the fact that I was dirty meant he had to clean. He had to clean me. I am redeemed. As we stand all over the sanctuary, somebody may be here right now. You're at your lost moment. Whatever you're at, whatever you're doing, God sent me here on my way to heaven. Not to focus on your lost moment, but to paint a picture of the Father still looking for you. Waiting, waiting for you. <laughs> 